Hi everybody, welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, X's and O's, one of my favorite concepts, the option concept. We are breaking it down, going through multiple playbooks, a bunch of different ways to do it. Fire it up to share it with you. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. So the option concept, a bunch of different ways to do it. In short, this is what it is. It is an option route. We'll go over it exactly what that means. Usually in the flat-ish area, usually anywhere from five to eight yards with combined with something behind it. If it's to the outside, it's usually a comeback tethered with the option route in the slot. If it's from a stacked alignment, it's usually with a seven or a corner, but it's attacking that same space kind of deeper on the sidelines, 15 to 20 yards. So think option route first, five to eight yards, in the slot area combined with that deeper throw on the sideline area 15 to 20 whether it's a seven corner comeback that's the combination for me when i think option in the nfl option route deeper comeback corner now let's talk how do you actually do or run hook up teach the option route so there's a bunch of different ways to do it i personally think the best way to do it is to think if there's no one there if it's zone coverage, no one's playing man to you, tight press coverage, you're just going to go up there, turn around, run like a hitch, a button hook. Run up, turn around, whatever your depth is. That's versus zone coverage. Versus man coverage, I think usually you start teaching it by saying you will break away from leverage. So if there is a defender on, let's just say, this side of a receiver, and I'm running this way, well, then I'm going to come up and break this way. Pretty common sense. Just the opposite. A defender over here, I'm running an option route, I'm going to go this way. Now, two kind of advanced levels to that that I think you can do. One is to break a cross technique. So if the defender is sitting inside of you, let's pretend the ball's over here, defender's inside of you, you can run an option route. If they're inside of you, they want you to go this way. They probably have help. They do not, they cannot get beat back across this way. So if you can get up and cross their technique, so come up, give them something this way, and then cross their technique, there will be nobody in there. Now, in my opinion, that's down the line learning, down the line reps. You don't do that with every wide receiver in your program, every wide receiver on the team. That's the guy who's actually going to run the routes in the game. So there's a way to learn it. There's a way to teach it day one, day two, day three. But then there's the guy who's actually going to do it at a really high level and you want to get to the point where eventually they have the confidence to cross technique. So if there's outside leverage, ball's in here, outs, you're coming up, they're sitting outside of you, they have no, they have help inside. They want you to go inside. So you come up, you give them a little nod to the inside, and you run back out, cross their technique. That's the first kind of major adjustment. The next one that I personally love even more is to have that option route, that first level option. So you come up, Whatever your depth is, it's not zone coverage, so you can't just turn around. The first thing I like to look for is can you take it to the slant? Can you take it to the post? Because if you can, let's do that and get a bigger gain. So if you can tether that slant short post to the option concept, and now it goes from being a three-way option to really a four-way option, I think it's a much better play. I've had a bunch of different success all over the place, whether it's college, high school, uh, NFL, NFL Europe, different countries running some variation of option. I love it when you tether that slant post to it. Now, again, it's not for everyone. You don't go out there, install this play the first time and say, hey, we're going to try, everybody's going to try to read and potentially run an option to the slant or post. That's a recipe for disaster. Teach it in baby steps. The first one is zone coverage. No one's there. Five, turn around. Next one is option versus man run away from leverage next one is option man cross leverage so go against their leverage and finally introduce the post or slant to the people that will really run it in the game and see if you can get good reps and then if they earn the trust of the quarterback the play caller then say hey you got the slant option very rare to give but when you give and it hits it's really fun a lot of special things happen from that option though it's Usually three steps to that for the quarterback, whatever the option is. First hitch, option. Second hitch, seven, or comeback. And really, that's the combination. One to two. Let's take a peek, see how a bunch of teams do it. The option concept. Love it. Most often, for me, run this a bunch of different ways, a bunch of different places. 
to me, it's a three-way go when it's run from the wide receiver spot most often. If it's zone and you can hook up, hook up like a little hitch, button hook. If you can run out in man coverage with inside leverage, run out. If it's outside leverage, run in. Buyer beware. What does that mean? That means basically in zone coverage, you just want to go hook up, get a completion. In man coverage, if this defender's outside leverage, we want to break in away from them as a day one learning. And just the opposite, if he is inside leverage. So if they're inside leverage here, we want to get up, give them something, break out. Whatever the distance is, you can run it. Run it a bunch of different depths. The concept most often, in my experience, has been one to the option, two to the comeback, or seven route, depending on if you run it out of a stacked formation we'll talk about later. But it's basically a low to high, one comeback, two something deeper, whether it's comeback, corner, whatever, right here, comeback. Now here in New Orleans, if it wasn't there, we'd flip all the way around, read this shallow cross in. It's not really relevant to what I'm talking about here when I'm talking pure option concept. I'm thinking option number one, and then really the details, the nuances, and how you teach, how you practice, how you rep, how you expect your option runner to run that, and we'll talk about the different ways to do it, to two to this comeback. And this is really the one, two simple side of it. If you get back to the backside, you're really beyond the option element of it and you're more into whatever else you're working, shallow cross, high, low, et cetera, whatever. It doesn't really matter. You can put anything on the backside. It's one to two option, low to high. Next here, now don't get lost in the verbiage for the Saints is back in the day, Saints for me, protection wise, whatever. The things to pay attention to are the fact that anybody can run this option route. So this is really where the, the nuance, the practice element of how you do this comes into play. At practice, usually everybody gets a chance to run the option. In the game, it's invite only, kind of like the hands team. So we can move whoever our best option runner is, whether it's the tailback, flanker, tight end, whoever, into run the option spot. So this is the same play, just locked in a different formation, different path, really the same pass pro, just got there a different way. The read is the same. One to the option, two to the comeback, three to whatever's backside. Simple, clean, easy. Other element here to pay attention to, depending on what the pass pro is, is what the alert hot is. So you see this little pressure drag out. Again, I used to be a big highlighter back in the day before I knew what I was doing with notes. So again, different ways to throw hots here. Hot, hot, depending on what the pass pro is. But the read is the same. The read is the read. One, shallow or option two, high, comeback, corner, whatever, one to two. I like this variation a little bit better. Again, don't get lost in the verbiage here. Tip tap is the motion, a little in and out for the tight end, the Y. Uh, AD talks about the six person solid pass pro. We get into the actual play here. Fullback option, Viking cross. Viking cross is just a double in, mills, whatever you want to call it on the backside. So again, out of the backfield, one, two, now again, out of the backfield, most oftentimes I was used to this being a five yard route. Really, that's a 10 yard route most oftentimes depending on where the toes of the back is. So again, just thinking about what it looks like, what it feels like for this guy to run this out of the backfield, just a little bit deeper, takes a little bit more time. And there's an added element, we didn't do it in New Orleans, but I loved a bunch of different places. And that is the idea of taking this thing to the post or to the slant. Now, you really got to trust your option runner to be able to do that, but had a lot of success, a lot of different places being able to do that, especially when it's a wide receiver type or a really talented tailback. The read doesn't change. Still one to two to three to whatever's backside. But for me, when you add in this option to the post, and we'll talk about it at different places, it changes the mentality of the option runner. So really good option runners. Obviously, you got to be able to see the hot. If you see the hot, you got to break out. If it's zone, we're going up, just looking to hook it up, five yards, boom. If it's man and we're not super comfortable and we're just trying to get a completion, we want to run away from technique. I already talked about it. Outside leverage, we're breaking in. Inside leverage, we're breaking out. Simple. The next level, though, for me, was always this idea of being able to take it to the post. And when we have that as the option, I think you really need to run this with the idea of, can I run this thing to the slant? Can I, can I, can I, almost like batting, like you got to anticipate the fastball. If it's there, you hit it. Otherwise, you hook up, you do this, you run in or out. 
You can't adjust halfway and be like, get into your break and be like, ah, I'm going to go to the slant. It's slant or nothing, and it's only versus perfectly clean look. If it's not there, we break it off. It's not there. We trust our technique. We trust our space. We trust what's going on. But again, this little bender to the slant, seam, post, whatever you want to call it, to me, is what really takes it to the next level. We didn't do it in New Orleans. I did it a bunch of other places. Again, the other thing to pay attention to here is just what's on the backside. It can be a read based on shell, based on rotation, based on coverage, whatever. You can see the little notes here from back in the day, alert lion. That just means uh, the quarterback would give the lion signal, almost always an L in every offense. Then we're going to come out here and just run double slant. If we get pressure, we don't have a, a backside kind of sneak it, uh, side adjust. So we'll just come out, rip a lion, rip a slant. Again, lots of moving parts. Great play. Love this play. Another New Orleans iteration here, this time X option. Again, just showing that anybody can do the option, how you get there with your different ways to formation people to death. Different pass pro here as far as now we're in six-person slide, two jet. Really, at the end of the day for the quarterback, doesn't mean much other than the fact that it changes the hot a little bit. So again, if your X receiver, let's just go hypothetically, isn't used to playing in the slot, doesn't quite understand hot responsibilities, breaking things off, side adjust from the slot area. All right, let's change up the pass pro. This time they go six person, have the duel away to the other side. So now the hot is backside. I personally don't love living in this world, but it allows this option runner to just focus on winning on the option. They don't have to worry about the hot. The quarterback can take care of the hot if we get two on the back, one to two. If both these guys were to blitz, we'd have to throw hot in the flat. So again, just different ways to construct the same concept. The read is the read, right? It's one to the option, two to the comeback, three to whatever's backside. Another New Orleans variation, this time halfback option. I personally loved it in New Orleans with the halfback. Deuce McAllister was a beast. Great with these routes, super sudden, easy to throw to, great hands. Right here, running the option. Again, motioning. This time we're getting to empty, right? First time we've run it out of empty. The read is the read. One to the option, two to the comeback, three to whatever's on the backside. And now the backside's even better, right? Because now we've got this little alert wheel if we really ever get that way. Only difference here is when you get into, in the West Coast world, five-person protection. Scat 22, 23 is how we called it. You're going to have hots on both sides usually. So if the line is going here to the mic, middle of the three linebackers, theoretically, if you got hit off either side, you'd have hots. I personally don't love living in this world. If I was playing this play, I would almost guarantee I would make the point here so that I could have my hot be to whatever side my first read was. So if both those guys came, I would be able to put the hot on the tight end or hot on the flat option. So just understanding how the pass protection is tethered to the concept, different options to be able to see who's hot, who's not, who's your best option runner. Lots of moving parts, but great option concept versus, that can theoretically win versus any coverage. Now, this was probably my favorite way we did it in New Orleans, and really it's the both option element. doesn't matter who's first, whoever gets tagged first. It's just the first read. It's the shallower of the two. So now we've got, when we're in the both option world, we make it staggered so that they don't happen at the same time. So the read changes a little bit. Now, theoretically, and it happened to me many times, if you get stuck on one option, on the first option, you can just go two to the comeback on the same side. But the play is designed to go one, the first option, two, the second option, three, the comeback to the side of the second option. So it changes the read, gives you more options, pun intended, you're welcome. Hey, you guys come here for a lot of good comedy. One, two, different depth, staggered, six to 12, three to the comeback. Love this one. This gives you great options versus every coverage, great third down play in the league. Lots of winners right around or beyond the sticks. Again, the footwork under center was five, gun three. Simple, easy to remember. Love this play, especially if you've got two guys that got wiggle, got a little football IQ, can win inside the numbers. Great concept. Again, another both option here. This time it's the halfback. So the halfback designates wherever they line up. doesn't matter. You set the formation however you want. Wherever that halfback is, he's the number one. So whoever's halfback both option, he's got the short option, the normal option, six to eight. The inside receiver on the other side has the 12-yard option. He's two. And then the comeback to that side is three. Again, if you get caught, because maybe you give this a five and a hitch, 
gun three in a reset, it goes one to two. So again, just being able, this is the nuance part of the play. So you get caught on one. You say, say he does the opposite of what you're thinking. You, you got to make him right. You can't make him wrong. So you can't anticipate this. You got to really know and have a feel for what this receiver or eligible is doing. If they do the opposite of what you're thinking, you just hang on that side and throw that comeback. The timing of it is really special. It's kind of three, one hitch, three, two hitches. Perfectly. Precision footwork tethered to the passing game. Again, just another way to get to the both option. This time we've got our flanker or our Z running the first option. And again, this can change by week. You know, all of a sudden you have an injury. All of a sudden someone's been surging at practice. You want to get someone to touch ways to move around the receiver. Whatever the formation is, stronger right slot. Again, six person slide protection, Z both option. So one, two, three. Again, notice that the read almost never changes. And if you get stuck, it's option to come back on the play side. Again, I love these types of simple, easy, what's the read? One, two, three, put it on him, let's go. This is a great one. So we've got the flanker both option. We're doing this at an empty. So let's tag a middle field open, soul crushing pipe dream. So if you get that perfect look, middle field open, alert, take that post. You love the matchup, let it rip. If not, it's just normal both option. So you've got this great pipe dream running right down the middle of the field. If it's not there, it's one to two to three. The same both option read we've been working the last couple slides. If you get caught, say you get caught peeking maybe the alert. You make this one, now it's two to three. So again, that alert just takes the place of one. And again, if you get caught hanging on the number one option too long, it's just the comeback tethered to that side. So the read never changes. But we add different ways to take advantage of different coverages, different opponents we'll see week to week, making it look totally different. But from the quarterback, the read is almost always the same. Another one from New Orleans. This time it's halfback option, snag. So we can make this read whatever we want. Again, we can also use the snag as the backside number three. So let's just pretend we just keep it pure progression. This PP here, it's one option, two comeback, three backside snag. Again, Bunch of different ways, gives you great hots on the other side. Theoretically, and don't lose your mind, we can have option, whatever we want, any other concept. Okay, so if you love option versus some type of man, bracket, whatever, well, let's put a zone beater on the other side. If you love it versus two man, let's put a close beater on the other side. So you marry these concepts together, but option, pretty good versus damn near everything. One more option combo look here, everybody's favorite, double stick. So depending on whatever the read is that you want, say maybe you wanna come out here and if you've got the double stick, take it. So one, if you've got either one of these little sticks, we've got a whole video on stick, we've got some double stick in there. If it's not there, it's just option, one to two. Again, you're only bounded by your creativity here as far as offensive architecture, how you're structuring these concepts together. But the read, the concept for me with this option play, it's always option and then something deeper behind it. In New Orleans, it was almost always comeback, but just as easily, a lot of other teams run this kind of stacked and they'll run this kind of like on a seven or corner, whatever, but really it's the same play. It's the same spacing. It's just option to this comeback area out here. All right, let's check out some other ways that other teams ran it. Here's the Vikings back in the day. They're running their options five yards, not the greatest image in the world here. Five yard option routes, they kind of bowed theirs a little bit more, but the read is the read. It's also tethered to comebacks. Again, so pick a side based on matchup, personnel, whatever you like. One, that option or dodge route. Two, comeback, there it is. Option, comeback. One, two, comeback. Now, this is a good time to talk about a little bit about how a lot of teams run this. They teach this pause or skip, oftentimes you'll see. So these guys will really either shuffle or pause here to see what the defense is doing. Give them a little bit of time and then you're into it. Because really the most important thing isn't necessarily the depth on these plays. It's not quite that precision timing anticipation. It's more about being on the right page, being on the same page and the time clock for these option runners. So. Shuffle, shuffle, or you, I remember seeing like Antonio Gates all the time would walk off the line and then get into it. It's just to allow the defense to declare. Allow them to show you what you're doing. Is it man match? Is it man? 
Are they zone dropping, spot dropping? What are they doing? And then go out there and take advantage of what that space looks like. Here's that option from Detroit days, Mike Martz days, called, called it Dodge as well. Again, this is just an option route. Now you can see it's tethered with that seven, how a lot of digit teams do it, but really it's attacking the same space, right? If there was a wide receiver out here and he was running a comeback, it'd be right there, same exact space. So again, it's one to two. Can't even read what my writing is over there, ZD or 2D, whatever it is, but you can see how we split the field in half, different ways to be able to get to exactly what you want to get to. So again, east, right, six person slide protection, Seven, the single receiver, it's got that corner. Six route, that little hitch. And then we've got the four route, that wrap in with the 64 combination. There it is, 764 F Dodge. Here's one from the old Cincinnati days. Again, don't get twisted about what's going on formation wise here. Lou is the protection. 595 are the routes, digit concept. Five comeback, nine seams, each option out the backfield. So this is the first time we're able to see that post move. So again, coming out here, if that post or slant is there, you take it. Otherwise, hook that thing up in zone, run away versus man. Again, they must not have given them an inside breaking option there. Again, the read doesn't really change. Again, different team, years apart, one, two. You play this one to two, you can play the op option concept in the league. Last one here, again, from the Cincinnati days. Again, Lou is the protection. China is a corner route. Seven, corner. 39, it's kind of this out with a clear route. H option, flat for the, t for the tight end. So again, you can see what our read here was. It was based off rotation. So if they rotate down this way, we're playing the option. If they rotate down this way, we're playing the 39. Again, if we caught too high or split field coverage, we're working the option. And again, you can tell if we can take that post, let's take it. Otherwise, we're sitting down versus zone, running out versus man. We've also got that hot route. Again, for all you people in the back, the two lines through it. In most people's, most quarterback world, that means hot. Why? Because it makes an H. Yep, you're welcome. So that is a wrap. The option concept. Fun ways to tether it to a bunch of different concepts. But at the end of the day, it's really the same play, just dressed up a bunch of different ways. The option route to whatever's deeper. Option route to whatever's on the backside. Simple easy, can beat just about any coverage, especially when that option route runner is one of your, if not the best football player on your team. So easy way to get them to touch. Let me know what you think. Again, have fun making these X's and O's videos. Let me know what you want to see next. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.